In the previous video, we discussed dependent and independent variables. And we looked at the weight of crop yielded versus the amount of rainfall whilst the crop is growing. Now, in both of these cases, these would be considered as random variables because they are not predictable. Okay, so uh, another example would be um, the number of goals scored in a football game, for example. It's a variable because um, it can change, and it's random. It's a random variable because it's we can't predict how many goals will be scored. Okay, so these are examples of random variables. Um, however. In a lot of cases, when we're looking at statistics, um, and we're looking at to see if uh, one thing affects another, we want to try and uh, control that a variable so that we, if we can adjust it, then we can see what effect it will have. And so that introduces the idea of a control variable. So this example, I've drawn a scatter graph where I've got the amount of fertilizer along the horizontal axis and the crop yielded on the vertical axis. Now, the amount of crop yielded would depend on the amount of fertilizer that's used. Okay, So that's why the amount of fertilizer is the independent variable along the horizontal axis and the crop yielded is the dependent variable on the vertical axis. Now, in this case, the amount of fertilizer I've kind of identified by the fact that I am controlling how much is being used so I can see what effect it will have upon the crop. So the amount of fertilizer here would be considered a control variable. So I don't know, this might be... Um, uh, a litre, two litres, three litres. So, you know, it depends on the amount of crop um, that you want to produce. But that's, um, that's the idea behind it. I am controlling how much and at regular intervals. So control variables are non-random variables. As you can kind of see, they are appearing at uh, regular intervals. And that's quite often when you have time as well. Um, if you are timing something um, and you want to check on how much has been completed at regular intervals, okay, that would also be a control variable. Um, you could also look at a situation, for example, if you had, um, let's say, a, uh, a hill and you wanted to measure um, how much uh, fungi was growing on this hill, for example, um, and you wanted to check at different kind of intervals up uh, at different heights, okay? So uh, you might have done the old experiment and we go out into the field with a, with a hula hoop and you throw it out and you, collect, and you count how many daisies are in it. I remember doing that when I was at school. So let's say you do that and you randomly throw out uh, your um, your hoop at certain intervals, okay, certain heights. So the height at which you are up the hill would be your control variable, okay. So that would be a non-random variable. The amount of fungi that I measure would be a random variable because that's the bit that I can't predict, okay. So that's your difference between a non-random and a random variable. Um, and, you know, if you follow on that kind of uh, that situation, if you uh, thought, OK, well, um, what if I made the variable at which I was choosing the height random? That would mean uh, putting into a random number generator and it would decide on which heights you would uh, choose um, to check how much fungi there were. Now, you just wouldn't do that in, practica in practicality. Um, the whole point is that you are checking at certain heights how much fungi there is, okay? Um, you wouldn't just randomly choose uh, where to look. Otherwise, you could choose 10 random locations, but they're all at the base of the hill or close to the base of the hill, for example, okay? You just wouldn't do that in practicality. So different situations call for a control variable to be used, whereas in other situations when you're just looking at two 
uh, variables like this to random variables, then uh, a control variable isn't involved.